Happy Mother's Day, ladies. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Oh, how we wish you filled this sanctuary with your presence. But I thank God that he's filled this sanctuary with his presence. And I know he has in your home too. It is a joy to be able to be here with us. I hope you've enjoyed the Mother's Day gift that New Beginnings has brought to you. Cindy Mogzig has been sharing her heart in song. She is our pastor's daughter. My wife Cindy and I got saved in Corpus Christi, Texas. We started attending Iglesia de Dios, the Church of God, and uh, Pastor Gilbert and Melva Davila were the pastors there, and they have four children, Eddie and Cindy, Ronnie and Steve, and man, they are amazing musicians and singers, and uh, I just wanted to share that treat with you today. Well, it's Mother's Day. I'm not going to preach one of these sermons, 10 things mothers should be adding on to their lives. You guys have enough going on. Oh my goodness gracious. Today I want to try to be an encouragement. I want to try to really inspire. I really want to try to help. And I want to try to help our families how to help you. Because I want to talk about what moms need and how we can help you get those things you need. I was reading this little article on children that they interviewed in the second grade. Why God made moms. So they asked the kids first, why did God make moms? Second graders, okay. She's the only one who knows where the scotch tape is. <laughs> Mostly to clean the house. <laughs> to help us out there when we're getting born. <laughs> why did God make mothers? Or how did God make mothers? How did he? He used dirt, just like all the rest of us. He used magic plus superpowers and a lot of stirring. <laughs> God made my mom just the same like he made me, only he used bigger parts. <laughs> what ingredients are moms made of? Second graders said, God makes moms of clouds and angel hair and everything nice in the world and one dab of mean. <laughs> they had to get their start with men's bones. Then they mostly used string, I think. Why did God give your mother and not, why did God give you your mother and not someone else's mother? Well, we're related, duh. <laughs> God knew she likes me more than all the other people that I know like me. <laughs> they asked the kids, what kind of little girl was your mom? My mom was al has always been my mom and none of that other stuff. Another kid said, I don't know because I wasn't there, but my guess, she was pretty bossy. <laughs> This kid says, when my mom was little, they say she used to be nice. <laughs> oh, I hope it brought a little laughter. I don't mean to be picking on you moms. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. What I want to share about today is something that I hope you teach to your children Dads, I hope you teach to your children. Moms, I hope you teach to your children. Relatives and friends. Because even if you don't have a mom anymore, you could still honor your mom and you could just celebrate your mom. And you could tell your family about mom and, and you could share some things that you really need to and, and really grab onto. And, and so what I've decided to share today is what moms need and how you and I can help them get those things. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 2, it says, honor your father and your mother. Then look at this. It says, this is the first commandment with a promise. So, Heavenly Father, I pray that we understand why it's so important for us to honor our mother and our father. And, Lord, we want to focus on moms today. So, God... You put it in your Ten Commandments. Not because you had a mom, you were there before anything else ever was. 
but you did it because it's so important that we honor our parents. And I pray that today we can learn how to do that. And I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. So how can you honor your parents? Well, there's a lot of ways to honor your moms. and I want to challenge you and, and, and help you think it through because some of you are saying, well, I no longer even have my mom, or I never knew my mom, or you don't understand, my mom was this vicious, ugly person that I, I, I never want to ever have anything to do with, and I don't have anything good to say. You know what? You can honor your mom and you can still say some good things because thank God she decided not to abort you. Thank God she decided to go through that vigorous labor, what they call childbearing. And she might have given you up. I don't know what all happened. But you're here. And at least say, thank you God that I wasn't an aborted child. Thank you God that I now can make a difference in this world in a positive way. So I want to talk about eight things. Eight things that mom need and the things that we could do to get them help. First thing is our moms need patience. Oh, they need patience. Man, moms say that they always can have more and more patience with their kids. They need peace. Boy, sometimes moms are going like, the kids are running, the, the dog is screaming, the cat's meowing, the fish are flopping. I mean, it, your house is chaotic. And you're going, oh, God, help me. Cal gone back, back in the old, old days. Okay, I'm dating myself because a lot of you millennials haven't a clue what I'm saying. But there was a co commercial of this bath soap, and it was called Cal gone. And they would say, Cal gone, take me away. Take me away to that place where I can escape. But it's really true. Our moms need those, that patience. And you and I can help. We really need to understand that. There's some scriptures I'm going to share. And when you really look at them, you really understand what I'm saying. Because we need to think about needing patience as a mom. And when, when we go through those situations, we've got to remember that God understands how much you need patience. Look what it says in the book of Psalms. Chapter 78, verse uh, 56. It says, But they kept testing and rebelling against God most high, and they did not obey his laws. Another version says, Yet they did all this, and they continued to test God's patience. Man, aren't there children that test your patience? Oh, I, I was that kid in my house, and we had five kids, and, and I had three older sisters, and, and it was not like they were perfect, okay? But I just want you to know that I was the one that just kind of just kept poking and poking and poking, and man, my mom would start screaming to my dad, Richie, Richie, por favor, ayúdame, please, Richie, help me, get this boy off my back. I'm trying to cook dinner, and I'd be there grabbing her and dancing with her and tickling her and saying, hi, mama, and kissing her. And she'd be like, oh, this boy. And my dad would just smile and go, oh, as though you're driving her nuts. She loves every moment of it. But sometimes we, like, push it. Man, why is it that there's always that irritant to that? Test your patience. It's inevitable that patience is, is going to be tested. And God says, I understand, mamas. I understand. I'm with you. I'm strengthening you. Hang in there. Well, they, uh, the patience, the other thing about patience, we've got to remember that patience is an expression of love. Man, sometimes dad can't take it anymore, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles. But man, there's nothing like the love of a mama that doesn't turn her back on her kids. And she's just patient and loving and caring. Man, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Man, thank you, Lord. And thank you, Mom, for the patience of your love, to show us that and express it. Another thing about patience is patience is used by God. God really uses it in our life 
to help us grow. He helps us grow. We, we go through a trial and we grow and we go, wow, see how you grew through that? You learned patience. You learned understanding. You, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. I mean, look what it says in the book of James chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. It says, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete needing nothing. Why? Because that endurance, that patience help you, it helped you to grow. You gotta understand if, if you're so irritated at a job, you can make a choice and walk away. If you're irritated in a friendship or a relationship or, or just at school, you can hang out with different people. But man, I don't mean it to sound this way, but you're stuck with your kids. And sometimes you're like, please come Help me. And they just take you to the edge. But man, God helps you grow and you grow in patience and love and understanding. It's amazing. And another thing about patience, God tells us to help others in their time of need. If we see someone struggling, we're supposed to help them develop. If we see someone struggling and stressed out, you're supposed to say, what can I do to help? I mean, you remember the golden rule? You remember Matthew 7, 12, where it says, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and in the prophets. It's saying, in other words, do unto others as you would have them do to you. So you need to just help your mama. You need to help your mom. You need to help your wife. You need to help your daughter. Say, you know what, baby? You're doing good. You're doing good. Hey, mom, I'm sorry. I know you're overwhelmed. What can I do to help? Hey, I'll throw out the trash. Hey, mom, you want me to start chopping some of the veggies for you? I know you're making a stew. I'll help you out, mom. I don't want to irritate you. Because you know what? We need to love. When you, true love isn't reciprocal. True love is sacrificial. See, you love no matter what. You keep giving no matter what. Even if you're rejected, you love. So I want to encourage you to help your mama. I want to encourage you to bless them and just help them as they develop in their patience because sometimes their patience runs thin. Second thing I want to say is our moms need appreciation. They need appreciation. You know, throughout the Bible, you see that God says, give credit where credit is due. Pat him on the back. Look what Paul says in the book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 3. He says, every time I think of you, I give thanks to God. Man, just the thought of you, thank you. What appreciation Paul is showing. In the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 3, he says, we always pray for you and we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, it's good to be appreciative of others. And it's important that we appreciate our mom, no matter what. No matter what. <clears throat> Today, you got up and, oh, mama, happy Mother's Day. Why don't you make a little list of the things you appreciate? Mama, I appreciate that you clean up my room. I appreciate that you wash my clothes. I appreciate that you smother me with kisses even when I'm bugged by it. <laughs> I appreciate that you cook breakfast or lunch or dinner. I appreciate that you wash and even iron my clothes. I appreciate, Mom, that you take me here and there and you let me bring friends over. And, Mom, I appreciate when I'm sick, you're there right by my side. And, Mom, I appreciate and I appreciate and I appreciate. There's so many things to appreciate our moms about. My mom has been dead 44 years. And you know what? I still appreciate her so much. We sit around, my siblings, and we'll talk about our parents. And, and we've never spoken ill of them. I was very blessed to have an amazing dad and mom. Some of you weren't, but I know I was. And you know what? To this day, I honor my mom. I appreciate my mom. And I tell my wife and my children now my grandchildren about the mom that I had. Again, I said, some of you are like, I never even knew my mom. But I mean it. Thank God she chose to give birth to you. Even if she gave you up, she might have known her situation. Said, there's no way I could bring this child a good life, but I'm going to give him to somebody that will. Appreciate that. 
Appreciate that she chose life over death. Appreciate your mom. Appreciate it. Why is that important? Well, the Bible says because, you know what? It's the only commandment with a promise. You'll be blessed for that. God wants to bless you. He wants to fill you. But your mom wants to be appreciated. And I'm bringing the third thing I want to say about moms. Our moms need a life. <laughs> they need a life. Some moms, man, the minute they had their child, they gave up their life. It's like, well, I want to be a wife. I still want to go on a date with my husband, but I'm so tied up with my children sometimes. And they're always caring for you and loving on you and watching out for you. Look what it says in the book of Psalm 127, verse 2. It says, it is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives us rest to those he loves, his loved ones. Say, man, what's going on? Here you're going through a struggle, and I'm saying, you know what? Why are you working endlessly just for food when I'm going to take care of you, God says. I'm going to give you rest. I'm going to give you just what you're going to need. You see right there, it's talking about a life that's out of balance, a life that, that, that got a little crooked there. They're working from morning to, 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 to evening, anxiously working. And, and God is saying, I want to give you life and I want to give it abundance. Look what he says in John 10.10. 10. He says, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. But my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. I want to give you that life. I want to bless you with that life. I want to give you a life and a life that's abundant. To really enjoy it. To celebrate it. We've got to give moms time to enjoy an abundant life. You know what? Moms know that they need time off and dads are like, I need to spend more time with the kids. <laughs> what a perfect combination. Give your wife a day off and you take the kids. My daughter this morning sent my wife a picture of her and the two of them together. And it was some years back when the Titanic uh, Museum was on tour and my wife and my daughter went to the, to the Natural History Museum and, and saw the, the museum and the, the exhibit that they had of the Titanic. And they took a picture, my daughter in the front with her arms spread wide and my daughter, my wife behind her, at like in the front of the ship, like in the movie. And she sent her that picture. And my wife said, that was such a fun day. And that day, I had taken my daughter's boys, and we spent a boy's day out. We just went and hung out, had a lot of fun, doing a lot of things. You see, you can help them have that life of abundance. You can help them have a life of joy. You can help them. But you've got to break some patterns. Because we get into patterns and we come home and we're exhausted and we throw our feet up and we turn on the television and we become a vegetable there and we just uh, veg out. And our kids are running around and they need us. you got to make some patterns, take some time to rest, but take time with your children. Take time to share as mom and dad and maybe just as dad, maybe just as mom, but you spend some time. So you got to change some patterns. And you also got to change being selfish. Because we can be a selfish people. Like, this is my time, leave me alone. we got to think of others also. There's times that the church has outings. Man, take advantage of those moments. People at the church that want to help you out. And they say, hey, I can babysit for you. And you know they're trustworthy and you know they're good people and you know you trust your children with them and you know you could leave them off and they're going to be safe. You need to do these things. You need to help these things so that you could really have that moment and mom can have a life. The fourth thing we need is our moms need wisdom. They need wisdom. It's really something that we talk about this. There's sometimes a, a real negative culture that we live in today. 
a culture that is completely against the family. <coughs> a culture that says, eat, drink, and be merry. Forget about your kids. You, they, they can take care of themselves. Give them a video game. Give them television and get them out of your way. <laughs> no, that's not... You need wisdom how to manage this. You need wisdom how to do this. The book of James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. In other words, God's going to say, absolutely, I'll give you wisdom. I'll help you. That way you can understand. So in your time of prayer, you can say, man, God, I, I need guidance. I need wisdom. I need wisdom. I, I want you to help my my mom, Lord, I want you to help my wife. I want you to help my grandma. Pray for them. Pray that they have wisdom to really be able to do the things and need to do and to balance things to, to keep it all together. In the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 3, it says, In him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Man, it's saying that in the Lord, you have these hidden treasures, these hidden nuggets. You just have to dig down deep in prayer and seek it and cry out, and God, I need your help because this is a very fragile world. This world is very delicate. This world is something that is so incredibly painful at times. I need wisdom to impart to my children, to my son, to my daughter, to my father, to my mother. I need to be able to impart to my husband. I need to impart as a woman of God how to be able to guide these people that you've put in my life and help them, Lord, through your wisdom that you impart to me. So our moms need wisdom. They also need validation. Our moms need validation. It is so important that they get validated. It's so important that they, they see that, that they see that they are, are truly a blessing from the Lord. That's, that's not a word, if you would, that, that, that comes from the Word of God to say, I need to be validated, yet you see it all over the Word of God. Because they need validation. They need to know that they're a good mom, that they're a good provider, that you really love them and you really appreciate them and you really pray for them and that they have a life because you're allowing them to enjoy that life in abundance and wisdom and understanding. But they need validation. In Proverbs 31, it's the most famous chapter in the Bible about being a mom and being a wife. And in Proverbs 31, you see... Sometimes women say, I want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. And here's how the chapter ends. It's really interesting how the chapter ends. In Proverbs 31, you look at verse 28 through 31. And it says, her children stand and bless her. Oh, that you would stand right now and bless your mama. If you're right there in the room with your mama, go over to her and just start kissing her. I love you, mom. I love you. Just tell him I love you. Her husband praises her. Man, I know she's not your mom. You have your own mom, but she's the mother of your children. Say, hon, I love you. I bless you. I praise you for the great mom you are. And then it says, there are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Man, talking about bragging about your wife, about your mama, can you imagine how she would feel? Oh my gosh, I'm better than all of them. Oh my, really, do you really think that? Mom, you're like grandma, but even better. Wow. <laughs> and then look what it says. Charm is deceitful. And beauty does not last. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Thank you, Lord. Reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. Man, like you just go around bragging about your mom. Look what my mom did for me. Look what she did for me. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. They need validation. They need to know that what they have built 
will last forever. Buildings are built and they're torn down. But let me tell you, they're building character in you. They're building an upright man, an upright woman of God. And they're saying, I've poured myself out to you. I want you to walk in the fullness of God the way I'm trying to teach you to do, to walk in the fullness of his love. And that brings me to the next thing. Our moms need communication. They need communication. They need to talk. <laughs> Look, especially a stay-home mom. All day she's talking little language language. <laughs> Hi, mijito. Hi, what would you want? What do you want? Man, when you finally get home, hun, <sighs> my husband gets home. Thank God I get to talk to him. Moms want to talk to their husband. They want to communicate. They want to sit down, and the husband's like, I'm all communicated out. <laughs> but share with them. Share with your mom. Talk with your mom. <laughs> my grandson, my second grandson especially, he would sit down, and he goes, so, Grandma, tell me, how you doing? So, Grandma, how's everything going? Grandma, How's your day been? Take time to talk. Talk to your mom. Share with them. Look what the Bible says about communication in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 29. It says, don't use foul or abusive language, but let everything that you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Be blessed. And share an encouraging word with your mom. Say, Mom, thank you for all that you do. I'll never forget one time I, well, I was in a band and, and uh, we took a serenade to my mom. It was like 6 in the morning and a whole bunch of us were there. There was a bunch of us. There was, I don't know how many, 12 of us or something outside my mom and dad's bedroom window and we started serenading her. And she woke up and she just cried and cried and was so happy. I'll never forget, she came out with a big old smile and she goes, Ay, Tony, como se quiero tanto. My Tony, they call me, Anthony's my middle name. And she says, I love you so much. And she told all my friends and she hugged every one of them. And then she goes, come inside, come inside, let me cook you breakfast. <laughs> we were there honoring her and she ended up making a huge meal of huevo con chorizo. I'll never forget. And she fed us all, and we all ate, and all of them were, thank you so much, Mrs. Mansfield, thank you so much, and they talked and praised with her, they communicated love. It was a great day, a day I'll never forget, and a day she never did either. Our moms need communication. You know what our moms also need? Rest. <laughs> they need rest. I mean real rest. I mean internal, not just eternal, but internal rest. The kind of rest that God is the one that takes care of. A rest that gives you this peace and just rest inside. A rest that, that just loves and carries. A rest that, that goes beyond anything you'll ever know. There's so many moms that are exhausted. Then there's a lot of single moms. And there's some grandmas that are raising their grandchildren. And there's aunties that are raising their nephews or nieces. And there's family members that have taken up the slack. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus says in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28, he says, come to me, all you who are weary, you're tired, you're exhausted, and are carrying heavy burdens. Oh, some of you are crying out because your son or daughter is addicted. Your son or daughter running around with the wrong crowd. Your friends and your neighbors are telling you your son is up to this, your daughter is up to that, and you're broken hearted. You're exhausted and you're heavily burdened. But it says, Jesus promises, I will give you rest. Oh, for you moms that have never had to go through that, you're so fortunate. There's so many moms that are crying out every day, Lord, give us strength. 
And last, our moms need faith. Our moms need faith. And we can share that faith together. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 1, he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. He's making an invitation. He's, he's recognizing our need for faith. And he's saying, look, you need faith. Please trust in God. Trust also in me. He goes, I really want you to lean on me. In the book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 8, he says, Oh, my people, trust in, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him. For your God is our refuge. He is our strength. He is our fortress. He is our redeemer. And he's trying to say, I know what you've gone through. I know the pain that you've endured. Moms, I know how blessed you are to have this baby that I gave you. Some of you are weeping today because your mama's in heaven. And this is your first Mother's Day without her. And you're going, man, I, I just don't know if I could do this. And God says, I'll do it with you. Because your mom taught you about the faith she had. And now she wants you to embrace it. You need to teach it to your family. And family, dads, children, son or daughter. This is the word for us. The words repent. I don't mean it like sometimes we hear the word turn around, repent. No, it's almost like an angry word. That's totally opposite than what the word really is. That's a word that means turn around, head in a different direction. It's a second chance. It's a, it's a word of hope. It's a word of opportunity for a new life. It's a, a, a word of opportunity that brings a difference. So if you haven't had all these ingredients in your household and you haven't blessed your mom with these wonderful ingredients, today you can start by just saying, I'm going to turn around and quit doing what I was doing. I'm going to start showing my mom. So, Mama, I love you. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to encourage you. I want to help you because I so appreciate you. And I want to validate you. I want to give you hope and strength. My wife is here with me. And Cindy, I'm going to ask you to come up real quick. I want to pray for you and pray for all the moms. She's got a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Bring those up here. Let's show off with how wonderful our church is. Because right now, I want you to know how great our God is. And I want to pray with you and for you. Cindy was sitting there listening to the sermon. And uh, all of a sudden, she just, I saw AJ and Zoe from the worship team walk up and they presented these beautiful roses to her as the mom of the church. Cindy, for all the moms out there, I don't know if you could talk either, but try to just encourage them today. Today's been a special day for us because our beautiful families and love us, they're honoring us, but more than anything, our Lord loves us, embraces us, gives us strength, right? Every day, every day. And even one of those days you go, I don't know how I could go on any further, God gives us more and more years and more and more days to embrace our children, our husbands, 
our friends and our families. It's so special to be a mom, a grandma, great grandmas. <laughs> but more, what's more special than that is just knowing that every day we're constantly being embraced by our Lord and Savior who says that He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And He loves us. We're His daughters, His ambassadors. And I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to everyone we miss you so much <laughs> I could stand here and look at all the friendly faces out there in our pews <laughs> by my own memories and my hearts and my imagination but we want to let you know that pastor and I just love you so so much and we thank you so so much for all your well wishes and prayers my goodness this morning my phone just wouldn't stop it just kept going and going. By the way, that wasn't my phone earlier. <laughs> it was probably Barbara's because I'm sure she's getting a bunch of messages too. <laughs> but uh, God bless you moms. I hope today is so precious for all of you. And please feel, feel our love. We love you very much. Miss you a lot, but love you so, so much. We'll be together soon. We will be. I believe that with all my heart. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much. Father, as I wrap my arms around Cindy, Lord, I, I just pray a blessing over every mom here today. The ones that, Lord, are celebrating with their children around them and some by Zoom and, and, and FaceTime calls and all these different methods. But Father God, what I pray, Lord, is that your Holy Spirit would minister to every mom here today every mom viewing father for the ones that lost a baby comfort them for the ones that lost their mom comfort them for the ones that have never known their mom comfort them for the ones that don't have a relationship with their mom comfort them and those that are celebrating their mom minister to them we thank you for this amazing day we pray blessing over every mom in the name of jesus christ our lord and god's people said Amen. Amen. Turn to your mama and say, Happy Mother's Day, Mama. <laughs> Let's say, Happy Mother's Day. Okay. Happy Mother's Day, all of you. <laughs>